time. And uh, when I say that we are actually improving the performance of these variants, we primarily focus on uh, the steady state or the dynamic characteristics. So steady state is uh, more or less, uh, we actually focus on the load bearing capacity and uh, the coefficient of friction. So our objective here is always to enhance the load carrying capacity, load bearing capacity, or to reduce the coefficient of friction in the bearings. Thereby, these, uh, these enhancements will probably help in improving the reliability of the equipment operated with these kind of bearings. Similarly, when we refer to the dynamic characteristics, dynamic characteristics, I'm also talking about both the static and the dynamic characteristics in my presentation. So when we refer to the dynamic characteristics, we primarily talk about enhancing the operating speeds of the equipment. So primarily we have uh, the fluid film world at half X, and uh, as long as we can increase the X, that is the operating speed of the equipment, we can have the higher and higher threshold operating speeds for these uh, bearings so that the world that is, that is occurring at around this half X can be probably delayed. So more is X, we can actually get higher value of the threshold operating speed. So these are the primary objectives behind our uh, work. And uh, actually, I have actually given uh, the presentations related to another line of our uh, focus, which was very, very dominant, that is the the partial slip texture. I would like to put it in the quote, partial slip texture, the reason being that we have been working in that direction uh, for the past 10 years. So to improve the, to, I mean, in designing those bearings, which were otherwise not possible to operate. For example, when we talk about uh, the concentric general bearing or the parallel uh, slider bearing, it is, a, it is impossible to define them under the normal conditions. But when we have these configurations, slip or texture, which is also in the partial mode at the inlet, we could show that uh, these bearings can be operated in these uh, concentric or the parallel operating conditions. <clears throat> concentric journal bearing or the parallel journal bearing. So this was uh, the main focus of research. I have actually given a number of uh, thoughts in that. But here for this particular FDP, I have chosen another very, very uh, important, close to us, close to our work. We have dedicated uh, some uh, time to into these. We have come out with these uh, the surface porous layer configurations as well. All the research that was undertaken, I mean, that is actually highlighted over here is, uh, was actually obtained from to a number of research grants in the Ministry of Higher Education in Malaysia with the kind support of uh, the colleagues at the University Technology of Technology So I always take pride in actually highlighting their uh, immense contributions in carrying out these works for the past uh, 10 years or so. So this is another area of uh, line of interest for us, the surface porous layer configurations. And in fact, as I go through my slides, I can probably explain more and more about uh, the, uh, the philosophy and uh, the modeling aspects and the benefits that, that we have actually arrived at, I mean, we could actually see in terms of the modeling of uh, these bearings incorporating these uh, configurations, right? So thanks a lot to my colleagues uh, from Malaysia, Professor Ahmad Nadidi Abdul Rani, Professor Norani Muti Muhammad, Professor Hamdan Khadiya, Professor Mukhtar Awang, and Professor Fakhruddin Muhammad Ashim. They have been to us in a number of uh, projects and uh, their kind support is great technology. And with that, before I give my talk, I would also like to uh, probably bring uh, some kind of uh, brief introduction to my background and the work that we have actually carried out in the area of the bearings. Recently, I have given this talk also in the St. Gates, where wherein I have highlighted my research background. In, uh, in fact, the work on the bearings started uh, way back in 1992 under the supervision of my professor. Uh, in uh, REC Calicut at the time. And uh, this was a master's uh, project in the general bearings. And we were uh, given the exposure to work in the fine entanglement modeling, which of course I did not pursue later that part, but the, the bearing part actually I carried further in the PhD in 1994 in IIT Delhi under the supervision of late Professor Biswas and Professor Athre. And uh, this was also an extension of the work which was carried out uh, in my master's. So primarily in my PhD also, I focused on the, the 
stability aspects of the hydrodynamic bearings plain cylindrical as well as uh, the multi lobe bearing configurations the multi lobe bearing configurations was the one which i got introduced to in my master so i obviously carried forward in my industry as well and this is actually the work uh, that i did my in my phd and uh, added to that i also focused on some kind of uh, cavitation phenomena that was very dominant in those times uh that was dominantly pursued by the researchers working in the area of uh, the journal bearings or the slider bearings um more mostly in the journal bearings so the cavitation phenomena i also initiated some part of it in the phd but that was not uh, fulfilling to a great extent so obviously after completion of uh, the phd i pursued the work in collaboration with uh, professor jagdish t saviki in uh, cleveland state university so we had a series of publications in the steady state and as well as in the dynamic analysis of the plain cylindrical as well as the multi loop journal bearing configurations using the cavitation modeling and uh, if i have to tell in more specific for the cavitation actually it is not uh, very very new in those days but uh, i mean it is very well known since 19 uh, i mean it is very well known since the renal boundary condition hub before that half summer field boundary condition summer field boundary condition and so on so forth and it uh, gained a lot of prominence in 1960s with the jacobson floberg olson mass conserving cavitation boundary condition so since 1960s to 1980s a number of researchers again uh, pursued working in the area of cavitation of the bearings and uh, in 1983 professor elrod has actually created a kind of a universal cavitation algorithm he is uh, uh, with the help of a switching function the equation switches on in the full film region switches off in the cavitation region so in a nutshell he said the one equation uh, with the help of a switching coefficient can be applied to the entire uh, entire uh, the circumference of the bearing both in the full film and cavitation so that was actually many researchers in those days in 1980s and 1990s they were actually behind I mean, the pursuing the pioneering work of uh, professor elrod so that was the big background and if i have to also talk about uh, the multi loop general bearing configurations it is actually the initiation from the professor pinkers oscar pinkers to create these multi loop bearing geometries for enhancement of the stability of the bearings and uh, again uh, the one of the pioneers in this area of research he was uh, like professor lund in 1978 he published a asme conference paper which is still the industry benchmark even till today he has given the data for all the four different uh, kinds of uh, multi loop bearing configurations published in 1978 and coming to india in fact in 1980s early 1980s uh, professor tikkeje singh is a great knight rookie and his uh, team of uh, professors and researchers they have pioneered the working on the multi loop bearing configurations and that is how i too had an opportunity to initiate uh, in that direction so this was some of the works and uh, way back in uh, 2008 and 9 so this is what i was referring earlier that we started uh, working in the area of uh, the the slip and later of course combined the texture uh, in the 2010 and started working in the area of partial slip texture journal bearings slider and journal bearings so this was our uh, main focus of research and uh, regarding uh, okay so before i proceed further i want to say that this is another area of uh, work that we are actually currently undertaking along with my chinese colleagues professor gozin and professor lina they are actually from beijing and uh, professor gozin also is a he was a student of professor jianbin as well as now a colleague with professor jianbin in chinghua university in fact uh, in the area of thin film lubrication professor jianbin is one of the pioneers from chinghua and uh, he has actually developed a number of models they have uh, advanced the uh, experimental uh, methodologies to see the phenomenon of uh, the thin film lubrication in the bearing so a lot of work was carried out and a special mention is also to be given to professor wang long li from taiwan another professor as a pioneer in the modeling of uh, the 
phenomena of various surfaces in the journal bearings and slider bearings. And uh, he has actually done some work in this area of research in the surface layer, porous layer, considering the electrokinetics and so on and so forth. So this is actually one paper which was in preparation. The paper which I have put up over here is actually dealing with the multi-layered uh, film, uh, multi-layered film, and uh, we are also taking into effect uh, consideration of uh, the partial slip texture configuration. We have also included the effects of the electric double layer in the analysis. So this paper is actually under preparation. We are actually uh, planning to, yes, uh, looking forward to publishing it as soon as possible. But of course, uh, the great motivation for this paper also comes back from our earlier works, which are which I'm going to highlight in my subsequent slides. Right. So with the this is all about a brief introduction about my background as well as my ongoing research work. And uh, with this, uh, I just wanted to take some uh, few minutes of time uh, to invite all of you, dear uh, colleagues, participants friends and uh, students and scholars. Uh, we have the ITRS 2020 uh, at SRM. So it is to be held online in collaboration with uh, SRM, our colleagues from uh, Sri Mata Vaishnavi University in Katra Jambu and uh, Center for Advanced Studies, AKTU Lucknow. So this is uh, held with great support from our colleagues and uh, my dear colleague here, uh, Dr. Jitendra, will actually highlight more into this uh, during his uh, keynote talk in this uh, FTP. So you are going to listen, you are going to have some more uh, information related to this. But what I wanted to say is, please, you are welcome to submit your abstract in itrsymposium at gmail.com. We have a number of uh, publications uh, in line starting with the CRC book. There are many regular issues. We have already talked about, we talked to them and they are agreed uh, to publish, uh, adding a line stating that the work was presented, work was presented at ITRS. We have some uh, good special issues. We have even uh, special issues uh, related to tribology. We also have special issues uh, in a more general, like American Journal of uh, Science, Arabian Journal of Science and Engineering. Uh, it is also a high impact factor journal from uh, Scopus. So welcome, welcome for uh, ITRS online. The registration is free for everybody. And uh, these are the keynote speakers. We have actually solvers in tribology delivering the keynote and invited talks in this event, which is going to be in November 5th to 7th. We have a number of uh, committees and great support uh, with the collaborators and colleagues in the advisory and the international advisory panels. So uh, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome to ITRS. And uh, you're also welcome, welcome to the MITC that is going to be held the next year in July, 2021 in Langkawi Island in Malaysia. This is uh, the Malaysia International Tribology Conference, which was to be held in 2020, but unfortunately in this pandemic situation, it is postponed to next year. And uh, this is going to be a conference uh, to be attended in uh, Malaysia. So welcome, welcome to this conference also. We have Tribo India 2020 also coming up. So you have number of uh, conferences in coming up in line. So you are, you are highly welcome. We are looking forward to meeting you online as well as uh, physically in these uh, conferences. Right, with that uh, short uh, uh, request, Thank you for the organizers for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to say a few words about our upcoming events. And I would like to pro go ahead with the presentation. And uh, right, so the presentation is outlined as uh, shown here. I'm uh, first I will talk about uh, the first paper on the stabilization of journal bearing using two layered film lubrication. Then I will talk in detail about uh, the journal bearing with the, with the double layer porous lubricant film, influence of uh, surface porous layer configuration. So these are the two fundamental papers. I will discuss in detail about uh, the methodology, about the motivation, about uh, the results and so on. And then we have lined up a couple of more papers, uh, which are basically an extension of the first two fundamental works. The later papers are, uh, involved some kind of a thin film with electric double layer, considering the porous layer, 
and even including the nanoparticles like cnt additives and then we had uh, the stability evaluation of uh, the double layer porous or surface or even the three layered bearing with the slip and partial slip so primarily as you have seen here we are trying to improve the bearing performance by taking into account of the various uh, uh, configurations you can say that so you using these various configurations some of them are basically hypothetical i will explain that in detail now and uh, some of them are possible researchers maybe 20 years back or even 10 years back when we started this work rigorously uh, probably there were not that many number of uh, papers in the area of uh, slay texturing is uh, very widely researched very dominantly researched and uh, it has grown exponentially for the past 10 years since we started aggressively working in that area texturing has also gone up uh, to a great extent but even slay it is now possible to see that uh, the researchers are able to generate surfaces which are providing slip and thereby these kind of surfaces are going to play a major role in, in influencing or enhancing the performance characteristic. Obviously not all uh, operating conditions are suitable. You have to have a fixed set of operating conditions and you have to have the surfaces to enhance the performance of these bearings and thereby to improve the reliability of the equipment in which these bearings are used for operation. So with that brief outline, I would like to go ahead with my presentation. So I would like to start my presentation with uh, stabilization of uh, journal bearing using uh, two layered uh, film lubrication. In fact, uh, I should say that the word stabilization itself uh, was uh, derived, you know, I took the motivation professor Professor Hashimoto, he is an expert in the area of dynamic analysis on the general bearing. And uh, he has presented a paper on uh, stabilization and uh, so on and so forth. So we took a motivation uh, because our objective was also to enhance the stability of the general bearings. Now coming to the two-layered film lubrication, you see that the, this is a schematic which shows uh, kind of uh, two layers. Uh, the dotted line uh, shows kind of the boundary between the two layers. So to put it in a simple way, we have uh, kind of a base fluid, which is uh, adjust, I mean, adhering to the or adjacent to the journal. And we have a very high viscous fluid, which is adjacent to the bearing. It can be otherwise also. You may have a high viscous uh, fluid adjacent to the journal bearing, or you may have a low viscous fluid adjacent to the bearing. So this is depending on the configuration we are selecting. But the idea of having two different fluids, in fact, I have to state here that this is still uh, fictitious or maybe hypothetical, but still this is the idea to which we have actually worked on that. Now, the idea is that, uh, in fact, I am now again specifying, uh, specifically mentioning that I worked on the stabilization or even you can say, more specifically, I worked on the dynamic characteristics of these bearings. But the static characteristics was published by uh, the professor uh, from uh, the US, uh, Professor Andros Zeri. He has published a paper on the static characteristics of the two layer plates. Right. So, we are reading that paper, it was really inspiring for us to see that. Uh, of course, the point he has highlighted is that the objective is to reduce the friction in the bearings. So what he wanted is that uh, some of the clearance space, he would like to fill it with a low viscosity fluid and rest with probably a high viscosity fluid because you have to have a low viscosity fluid to reduce the friction and you have to have the high viscosity fluid to have the load bearing capacity. If it were to be entirely of the low viscosity fluid, the bearing loses its load capacity. Like for example, water, it cannot have the load capacity, right? So that is why my, nowadays I see many of my Chinese colleagues are working in the area of water lubrication, but trying to see ways of enhancing the load capacity by adding additives and so on and so forth. So Professor Andra Zeri in 2010 or so published his work and, uh, and then he has uh, come out with a very beautiful modeling very, he has actually uh, did not get the absolute results. <clears throat> he has 
he did not get the absolute results rather he has given a kind of a relative results relative results in the sense that the results of this bearing in comparison the load capacity of this bearing in comparison with the bearing with the base weight or similarly the coefficient of friction of this bearing in comparison with the base weight right so this was very much uh, motivating to a great extent and then we thought we can extend this further in fact the professor andros jerry later he has published another work which is called the floating general bearing uh floating uh, bearing in the sense that uh, the reviewers have highlighted the difficulty of having uh, this kind of a bearing with two different fluids flowing in the clearance space so uh, he has to go for a kind of a configuration like a floating bush so you have a bush which is separating the high viscosity fluid with the low viscosity fluid but then when you have a floating bush the mechanics of uh, the bearing will be altogether so it, it requires altogether different analysis and uh, the areas in which it can be applied also will be different and the, so that's altogether a different uh, story so we anyway so with that motivation we thought of extending what the professor and and rosary has done exactly to the analysis of the dynamic characteristics of these bearings obviously uh, professor jerry also has chosen the long bearing approximation we have also chosen the long bearing approximation and uh, then as uh, professor jerry has done we have also chosen uh, uh, the relative coefficients and not the absolute results right so this is what we have done it and uh, one point i wanted to highlight here is that the as i mentioned already the dynamic characteristics the work that we are doing is actually for we are following the work from the professor lund in 1978 it is for the the two dimensional bearing configuration so you have the uh, pressure term in the circumferential direction pressure terms in the axial direction so if you were to have a pressure term in the circumferential direction then it is only the long bearing approximation you ignore the flow in the axial direction and uh, if you were to ignore uh, if you were to consider the bearing is to be short then probably you can ignore uh, the pressure terms in the circumferential direction and you can go for the short bearing approximation and uh, at this point i wanted to highlight that uh, late uh, professor j sraw also very simply he was a he was a, he was a pioneer in the area of uh, rotor dynamics and in his textbook on the rotor dynamics he introduced the infinitesimal perturbation method which was actually done, pursued by lund for the two dimensional analysis he initiated that analysis he initiated that analysis for the short bearing approximation so that was a great motivation for us from professor j saw and uh, we implemented the infinitesimal perturbation method for the long bearing approximation in this work and that is how we got the results and uh, many of our subsequent papers are actually following the technique that was implemented in this particular paper in the calculation of the stability of the general bearing configuration so i don't want to go into the details of the experimental uh, Just sorry, I don't want to go into the details of the modeling, but all I wanted to say is we have the governing equations which we call the momentum equations, and uh, we write the momentum equations for each uh, fluid in the clearance space. Then we have the boundary conditions, we have the interface boundary conditions, and when we integrate the momentum equations with the boundary conditions twice, we get what is called the velocity profile, and. Uh, we get what is the velocity profile as i mentioned we have the different boundary conditions at the interfaces and uh, applying all of them and integrating the velocity profile across the film thickness we can get what is called the first order reynolds equation so if you if we add the dynamic terms into a form we get what is called the first order reynolds equation for the dynamic condition so that is what we get it and uh, obviously in the analysis of general bearings we have we make use of non dimensionalization because non dimensionalization will give us an idea about what is the performance of uh, the bearings under different operating conditions so now we do the non dimensionalization so we have these different parameters beta is the viscosity ratio of the high viscosity fluid to the base fluid and gamma is also a parameter of uh, ratio of uh, the the uh, The, the thickness of the base fluid to the thickness of the filling 
So these are some of the various uh, non-depression parameters. So we have chosen different uh, configurations, as I mentioned earlier. One configuration is high viscosity at the bearing, low viscosity at the general, and vice versa. So we can do the analysis. And this is the procedure uh, for uh, the infinitesimal perturbation method, which we have taken from uh, Lund, which was published in 1978. And later, uh, that paper was by Lund and Thompson, to be very precise. So that was a very great uh, motivational work from the Lyndon Thompson in 1978. And uh, we can, uh, using this infinitesimal perturbation method, we can get one equation for the steady state, and uh, we can solve the steady state equation for the pressure, and integrating the pressure, we get the load capacity, and um, we get the radial and the tangential, and we get the total load capacity. And from that perturbation, we get uh, four pressure gradient uh, expressions, Again, solving these four pressure gradient uh, expressions for the uh, four stiffness and four damping coefficients for the typically for the case of bearing analysis. So what we can get is we can get eight coefficients, four stiffness and four damping coefficients. Integrating these uh, pressure gradients in the full filling, we can actually obtain these dynamic coefficients. Again, uh, Lund has given uh, this uh, analysis of calculation of the critical wall frequency ratio and the threshold speed. So substituting these values into these equations, we can get what is the threshold speed, what is the critical wall frequency ratio. So what exactly we are doing here is that we have an altogether a different uh, feeling in the clearance space. Unlike a film with totally filled with the base weight, we have a film which is filled with the high viscosity and the low viscosity fluids. So that is how we are actually getting a different uh, pressure profile, different uh, pressure gradient profiles, and thereby the different load capacity and different dynamic coefficients. So that is how we do it. And we have actually computed some results. So CW is not all about uh, the coefficient of uh, it is basically a coefficient, but W refers to the load capacity. So load capacity of the configuration divided by the load capacity of the base fluid will give us load capacity coefficient. And gamma is basically how these layers are divided in the film thickness. So you can say that gamma is equal to zero, it is entirely thick film, gamma is equal to one, is entirely base film. So that is how some nomenclature, some criteria. So we could see that the load capacity coefficient, of course, for the thick films is very high. So that is what we can understand. Uh, it is exactly to the proportion of uh, the ratio of the viscosity of the uh, thick fluid to the viscosity of the base fluid, right? And then we have got some values of the coefficient of threshold speed, also the coefficient of critical wall frequency ratio. So we could see that some very much uh, in insightful results that uh, the coefficient of uh, the threshold speed for the two-layer configuration is in turn uh, for a value of gamma around uh, 0.15 to 0 uh, 0.15, I think it is uh, for beta is equal to 100 and around 0.2 for beta is equal to 10. We could see that there is a great uh, enhancement. So it is actually a mathematical model, but uh, to get it in practice, it's altogether a different uh, scenario, as I just now explained. Even Professor Andrew Seri himself, uh, he has acknowledged that the reviewers uh, have highlighted this aspect. But anyway, so assuming that we can possibly have the bearings under thin film operating condition. Thin film is something which is uh, on the, in the order of nanometers, 100 nanometers or so. So if there were to be these kind of layers of film, and then we, could, we can tell that our model is going to give these kind of results these particular specific uh, configurations, we are going to have enhanced stabilities of the bearing. So anyway, so that was all about uh, the two layer filling. Now let me talk about a little more on the, the porous layer filling. The single layer, of course here we are talking about the double layer porous and the surface porous layer, anyway, right? So then, the motivation for this work again came from the professor El Sharkavi from Egypt. He has worked on the porous layer lubricant film. So the idea is that 
previously we were talking about the clearance space to be filled by the high viscosity fluid and uh, here the clearance space is filled by kind of a porous layer configuration so how do we get the porous layer configuration it is all it is again a matter of uh, a different aspect where we can say that uh, these uh, additives in the lubricants will probably adhere to the surfaces and to the order of very small thickness uh, in comparison to the clearance uh, space and uh, they form a kind of a elastic layer they form a high viscosity layer or they can form a porous layer so much of this work was actually initiated and pioneered by professor john tichy uh, he was a, he was also one of the editors of uh, journal of fly biology sometime back and uh, so he pioneered uh, working in this area i i have also told that professor wang longley has also pioneered in uh, analyzing the structure of additives in the clearance space as porous layer that is fitted onto the bearing or journal surface or a high viscosity layer or a elastic layer whatever you know so these are the various ways in which the additives in the way in the in the lubricants when they are added and uh, when the lubricant is being used in the journal bearing or slider bearings they form these kind of uh, films and uh, the impact of uh, these films on the bearing load capacity or the coefficient of friction is what is being evaluated by these various researchers so that obviously since uh, you can say that uh, since it was uh, done for the single layer obviously there is an interest to, to see what would be the impact on the double layer so you are, we are going to talk about uh, two different layers of different permeability and then we can uh, probably do some computations and get some results and see what will be the impact of the double layer but what is uh, more interesting and more um, we can say that the motivating uh, result is that we are talking about a surface porous layer configuration what is a surface layer configuration so if we were to imagine that this porous layer would be of high permeability means the flow of the fluid through this layer would be like in a normal condition then we can treat it as a surface layer right so we can even uh, consider the viscosity to be same or we can consider the viscosity to be higher than the base fluid right so but the idea is that the permeability is so high the fluid passes through it very easily so that is the surface layer and if the permeability is very low the fluid cannot pass through the porous layer then we can say that the phenomenon of uh, consideration of modeling of the porous layer configuration will come into existence so we have found the paper in the journal of applied mechanics in the area of mems where in our way the other professor uh, he has actually pointed out that you can have a kind of a surface uh, where the porous layer which is actually above the surface layer you can see that you know we are talking about two layers so the layer which is uh, adsorbent to the bearing is not of great significance as compared to the the top layer which is you know which is a topping to the the bottom layer so the topping layer is the one which is dominant it dictates the performance characteristics of the bearing that is what actually uh, the work in the mems by the professor who has published in the journal of applied mechanics he mentioned this aspect that the topping layer is the one which is deciding uh, contributing uh, configuration that dictate so for example if i have to talk about uh, the 10 uh, the 10% of the film to be made of a porous layer it need not be i can get the same characteristic even if i have the 8% uh, to be a normal surface layer of high permeability but the topping layer which is of 2% or whatever it should be of porous layer having very low permeability so it should the topping layer should restrict the flow of the fluid and that is what the motivation that we have uh, got from that paper and then i apply we apply the concept and we have got some very interesting results to show it to you that uh, these kind of uh, the topping layers of porous layers will dictate the similar performance as compared to the entirely porous layer in the bearing configuration so this was in fact a very uh, fulfilling uh, result that we have obtained by doing this computations and as i 
also highlight at this point that most of our analysis is based on the long bearing approximation only. Long bearing approximation only. Usually, when you say it is L by D is greater than two, but otherwise you can say that we can ignore the actual flow. So dominantly, the gradient of uh, the pressure in this circumference is the one which is the dominant parameter to determine the pressure or even the pressure steady state or the pressure gradients under dynamic conditions. So this is in fact uh, the analysis is all about. And uh, this particular paper in fact highlights. And I wanted to uh, get your attention to say that of course in bearing there are works like porous bearing configurations and so on and so forth. But uh, this work is not related to the, the porous bearing configuration. We are not talking about the, the base uh, structure Mm, the the bearing structure itself is not porous. It is only the the porosity is basically coming up from the additives which are actually present in the lubricant film, and then this these additives when they adhere, they create some kind of a layer which is treated to be as a porous layer. So obviously, it is we are trying to say that when the fluid enters, it will find more resistance to flow. Any kind of more resistance will improve the load bearing capacity. Will increase, you know, it is effectively we are saying that a resistance to the fluid flow will enhance the viscosity of the fluid. So it is in a in a way saying so, right? So if you if there is more resistance to the flow of fluid, we translate to saying that it results in more load bearing capacity. So all the work is in fact uh, trying to see how do we create a kind of a resistance to the flow of the fluid in the bearing, thereby we can get improvement in the performance characteristics. So this is all the rest. Anyway, so coming back to the mathematics part of it, I have only highlighted that we have the governing equations. So for the flow through the porous layer, we have the Brickman equations. And uh, we mentioned that we need to have the coupled stress kind of a fluid with the additives in the lubricant. We have the, the very, very popular Stokes equation for the coupled stress fluid film, which is widely used across all, by all the researchers. And then we have uh, Newtonian uh, momentum equations for the base way. So we have the different governing equations. We have the boundary conditions across uh, each layer and at the interfaces. And then we start integrating them with the governing equations. Then uh, substitute, I mean, when we integrate uh, the governing equations twice, we get uh, and substitute the boundary conditions, we get what is called the velocity profile. So we have the non-dimensional expressions over here. So we have the non-dimensional equations for the velocity profile, velocity of the fluid film in these uh, clearance spaces for the different uh, layers of the configuration. And, uh, and then these are the associated terms involved. And uh, finally, we get what is, once we have the velocity profile, we integrate the velocity profile across the film thickness, we get what is the first order Reynolds equation that is in terms of the pressure gradient. So you could see that we have this equation dp by d theta is equal to g1 minus q by g2. So this is what is called the first order Reynolds equation. And solving the first order Reynolds equation, we will get what is the pressure profile in the bearing. And from the pressure profile, we can find integrating the pressure profile, we get the load capacity. Integrating the velocity at the boundary, we get what is the shear stress, velocity gradient at the boundary, we get the shear stress at the boundary and we use it to calculate the, uh, integrating the shear stress, we get uh, the friction force and uh, friction force divided by the load capacity will give us the coefficient of friction. So again, when we come back to the surface porous layered uh, configuration, we have some uh, changes in the governing equation. The Brinkman will go and then we get the normal Newtonian equations and then uh, the rest remains the same. And then we do the analysis and I, we have highlighted what are the parameters that actually fall apart or different from the earlier analysis and that's how we have written it down. So then the results are like uh, for different eccentricity ratios for the lambda is actually a couple of parameter. Higher lambda means uh, more additives are added and the influence of additives is more. It is actually the characteristic uh, property of the additives. Higher lambda, the, char the characteristics of the additives are dominant compared to the lambda is equal to zero is Newtonian. And then we have uh, the different layers of uh, the porous layer. I mentioned that if the low permeability, the fluid cannot enter, then more 
load capacity. High permeability, the fluid can easily enter, then it's a normal flow. So these are the various uh, bearing performance characteristics. And then, of course, this is a slide that I wanted to highlight. Even by having that 20% uh, or 10% of the topping layer to be permeable, the rest can be surface layer. So that itself may uh, bring in a huge uh, difference or in fact, you know, almost uh, of the same order as compared to the completely porous or double porous layer configuration. So this was uh, the, uh, this was the research uh, result from the earlier researchers also. And uh, our results were actually derived. The motivation came from their work and then we implemented that in our research and obtained these results. So probably it, it gives to the lubricant manufacturers some idea about uh, the influence of these additives in the bearing configurations and then, you know, uh, where exactly these layer, the resistance layers need to be formed. No point of having a resistance layer adsorbed into the bearing. It is better to have a kind of a resistance layer over the, uh, the normal layers. So that is what the whole idea is all about. So, well, I think uh, I did not add any much, uh, any more theory into my later part of the discussions, but what I, what I wanted to highlight is that this is another paper which was jointly written by our um, Professor Norani Muti Muhammad and uh, the other colleagues. Uh, it is on the, uh, the electric double layer and considering one porous layer in the polyfilm region. So EDL is like uh, incorporating the electrokinetic force. So what happens is basically with this kind of EDL uh, filling that is being uh, consider that that is being generated in the clearance space, you have the resistance to the flow of fluid, right? So whenever you say you have a resistance to the EDL is actually dominant in the MEMS, micro channels and all that. So the same technology we are actually trying to implement in the bearings also. So when we say we can generate these EDL fillings, electro, electric double layer fillings with the help of the electrokinetic body force that is actually coming into the modeling of these kind of films, these films will resist the flow of the fluid. So whenever there is a resistance to the flow of fluid, there is an enhancement in the bearing load capacity. Similarly, when we are treating a porous layer on the pad or the bearing surface, again, we say that there is resistance to the flow of fluid. So these kind of parameters, which are actually dealt with, will let us know that what is the impact of these parameters in terms of the performance improvement, that is the load capacity improvement or the coefficient of friction reduction. So this is the primary objective of that paper. And uh, we have actually done some results for the AH refers to the slow parameter. AH is equal to zero means parallel bearing. AH is equal to 0.1, 0.2, 0.34. And actually, the bearing is slightly inclined. If inclination is increasing, we could see that the performance is also improving. So that was, and delta is actually a kind of parameter, which is the, the thickness of the porous layer is, uh, delta is 0 0.05, very small, and then it is increasing 0 0.1, 0 0.151, so on and so forth. So we can actually understand the influence of the electric double layer or the porous layer on the performance characteristics. So with that, of course, the, the design, I mean, once we have these designs, then the manufacturers can have an idea like what uh, kind of parameters are dominant in enhancing the performance characteristics of the bearing. So I think uh, the same is being explained over here. This is the paper actually again on the stability analysis of the double porous and surface porous. Anyway, the point is uh, this is nothing uh, different from what I have explained in the very beginning of my presentation uh, where uh, I have talked about the motivation that we have got from the professor Andros Zeri on the two layered film and then we developed the, the extension of the steady state that he has done to the dynamic characteristics and taking the motivation from the pioneering work from Professor, late Professor J. Strau in the area of general bearings and proto-dynamics through his textbook, he has published it, the infinitesimal perturbation technique. So I already mentioned that the same technique, we have used it over here as well. The only difference is that the dynamic Reynolds is equation is going to have the different terms uh, reflecting the kind of uh, parameters that we are analyzing here. So here we are taking a porous layer. So obviously we have the different parameter, different uh, parameters of the dynamic Reynolds equation. But the procedure remains altogether the same. The procedure is the same. 
which was actually published way back in 2012. The same procedure based on the Professor Moon and uh, Professor Rao. Right, so some characteristics on uh, the load capacity coefficient. We could get some interesting results to see how they are actually operating, how they are uh, influencing. And uh, CW is again uh, the load capacity coefficient for the surface porous layer configuration. And the addition is we are also uh, produced, we have produced using the, the analysis of uh, the dynamic analysis of the journal bearing for the layered film conditions. We could analyze the results of uh, the threshold speed coefficient as well as the critical wall frequency ratio coefficient, which I am showing you in the next slide as well. Now we could see that how the threshold speed coefficient is actually going to be changed when we have these kind of layered configurations across the film profile in the bearing configuration. So this is indeed a very good uh, uh, idea to get, like what is the amount of benefit in terms of the performance improvement of the threshold speed that we can derive from the having these kind of layered configurations. So using the simple analysis of uh, normalizing the performance of these kind of bearing with the base fluid operator bearing. So again, the idea we pick it up. Although the idea, I know it's, it's quite uh, obvious, you know, we all have ideas to work with. But then, the, definitely we have to acknowledge that the motivation after seeing the paper from Professor Andrew Zeri, it has actually, you know, that has strengthened us to go ahead and publish in that uh, format of uh, the results to enhance the impact of the improvement. You know, you could say that, I could say that now you see that it is around 1.6 you know, the highest improvement. So it is 1.6 times compared to the normal bearing configurations improvement in the threshold speed for uh, the layer thickness of 0.25. So that, that's tentatively some kind of a result the idea that we can get, we can, as a designer, we can inform to the manufacturers of these new uh, products. Right, so this is again the same for the surface porous layer configuration. And uh, again, the critical wall frequency ratio extremely important so i was mentioning it is a half x so we can see that you know if it is uh, less than half x so the area below that is uh, unstable and the area above it is stable so these are some parameters which are already defined by loom and which are, which are widely used in the industry standards also today right so the last paper is about the stability evaluation of the three layered bearing with this slip partial slip we have, in fact, extended these works to the partial slip texture as well. But uh, as I would like to say, it is altogether again where we are trying to in introduce another parameter, which is uh, the partial slip, or you can, we could say that partial slip texture as well. So by incorporating these uh, different parameters, we could uh, see how each of these parameters uh, are going to influence the performance characteristics, load capacity as well as the stability of the bearing configuration. So this was the objective of uh, this particular uh, paper. And uh, the this particular paper is in basically in two parts. The first part is we have the partial slip throughout. Yeah, sorry, it is, uh, yeah, sorry. I think, uh, yeah, this is the paper where we have the slip completely. And uh, to, to highlight to you that the entire slip, in fact, we should say half slip. And the next figure I have shown, we call it quarter slip. Full slip means you have slip on the journal as well as the bearing, which is totally avoided. Even half slip is not recommended, it is also avoided. So quarter slip is the one which is recommended. And that, that is what is there in the next slide. But the idea behind this particular work is, is we can get a kind of the normalized parameter. The slip, the layer thicknesses, the layer viscosities and so on. So in order to give a simplified form of expressions to the, uh, for the purpose of analysis, we have actually considered this kind of model. But in practice, this is not recommended. And then, as I mentioned, this is the quarter slip. So in the sense that we have considered slip to be in the entry zone, in the inlet uh, zone of the bearing. So then, anyway, this is altogether a different uh, area of research, which I have actually dealt in detail. But uh, I wanted to say one point here for the attention of our uh, colleagues that uh, the, the results from the slip 
are actually contrasting for load capacity and uh, dynamic characteristics or the stability. In the sense that the the zone the the zone of slip that give that is giving us a very good load capacity is not giving us improved stability of the bearing. So we are getting inferior values of stability of the bearing. And uh, anyway, so they, there was another paper on the multi lobe bearing configuration, and especially the two lobe bearing configuration, we could actually have some kind of a convincing uh, results wherein this lobe bearing is giving us enhancement in the load capacity as well as enhancement in the stability. But otherwise, for most of the plane bearings, the choice of the slip zone is giving, I mean, which is giving high load capacity, giving a spore stability. So this is one uh, inference which we have debated in the conferences in Beijing and other places. So anyway, um, yeah, as I was mentioned, as I mentioned, if we had uh, full sleep, probably we can explain the characteristics in terms of the normalizer coefficient. So that's the reason why we have taken it to be sleep on the bearing. Sorry. I have to tell it on the house slip because slip on the bearing. We are not taking slip on the gunner. And then uh, this is the same. Well, and then uh, these are some of the results of uh, the actual results. The previous slides are showing the normalized values, and these slides are showing the actual values. So, normalized values will give us an idea in terms of the numbers of uh, how much improvement or how much deterioration in performance is. So again, uh, then we have the analysis for the partial slip. So we could actually give the performance characteristics in terms of the absolute values. And we have done in detail, but as I have just mentioned, the difficulty is uh, the zones which are giving us uh, very good load capacity, unfortunately are not giving the high stability. So one of the reason uh, I can probably attribute is uh, going back to the, uh, the, the theory provided by Professor Cameron that these kind of uh, the slip zones at the inlet are giving actually kind of a tangential force which is creating instability in the bearing. Now again, when I am saying inlet, 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 it is basically the Professor Tonder who has actually, who has actually created a spark by saying that the inlet roughness, inlet texture, and then later on, subsequently, our colleagues uh, in the US as well, uh, the student of uh, Professor Richard Salant. So they have actually talked about inlet slip. So the word inlet gained dominance in the early 2000s, although the roughness textures are there since uh, you know 1960s or so, but creating a surface, desired surface at the inlet, which can actually lead to improvement in the bearing uh, performance characteristics. So that is the reason why you know the slip and the texture were, were uh, focused at the inlet. Although there are researchers who have uh, uh, you know done analysis saying that it's not necessary at the inlet, but at the middle or at the exit zones also it is going to give the enhancement and all. That's a different issue altogether, depending on the operating conditions. But our focus was primarily at the inlet. And uh, so the difficulty here is that uh, the contrasting uh, the characteristics of the load capacity and the and the stability of the bearing. So again, so right. So these are some of the areas of our great interest. So as I said, you know, although the slip texture was our main uh, focus of research, but uh, nevertheless, the pioneering modeling work by Professor Zeri, Professor Wang Longley, Professor John Tichy, and uh, Professor Jian Bin in terms of uh, the layered lubrication has uh, so we have a lot of interest in that and hope to actually uh, look forward to working further in terms of uh, improving the modeling of the thin, thin frame layer lubrication, because fundamentally we are actually not taking into account of the surface features. We are only taking into account of the reality of the, the different layers of the flow, right? So they, there are always uh, any, I mean, the room for improvements, even incorporating the thermohydrodynamic characteristics and so on. So in the conclusion, I wanted to uh, say that uh, we were, we talked about the kind of uh, high viscosity fluid com uh, combined with the low viscosity fluid. fluid. We talked about uh, kind of the layers, porous layers, uh, high viscosity surface layers, elastic layers. Of course, I did not deal with here. That was already uh, you know, proposed hypothesis. Uh, of course, it was given. Analysis was also done by Professor Tichy. 
uh, but then more uh, prominently more dominantly the work was with the high viscosity layers and the porous uh, layers and then we added up uh, this combination of the the surface porous layer combination so the entire uh, idea is that we are able to show to the designers that there is an improvement there is a great improvement in the performance of these bearings by incorporating these kind of uh, films in the clearance space of the bearing so but of course the challenge is to see them in practice and to get the results in the practice that's not of course uh, that's a big challenge but uh, our focus is primarily on uh, in the modeling aspect and trying to understand the quantitative improvement in the performance characteristics of the bearing and uh, i would like to thank uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, UF petronas uh, utp petronas in malaysia as well as uh, broad uh, for all the great, uh, great motivation for all the great support uh, in uh, carrying undertaking these kind of works and uh, thank you geetam school of technology bengaluru for giving us this opportunity to share our work uh, with our uh, with our participants uh, they are also experts uh, definitely so with this uh, i would like to end my presentation thanks a lot to professor radhesekar thank you so much thank you sir thank you very much for your elaborated uh, presentation uh, i'm sure that definitely this would help uh, a lot for the researchers as well as participants people are working on this area you are provided with a very good knowledge where people can uh, extract uh, many uh, like uh, Uh, concepts and uh, many research problems can be drawn from this uh, presentation what you have given very nice presentation sir sir uh, we got few questions in q and a sir so sure, like sir. Uh, we have a active participation every time like we have been seeing like professor radhakrishnan from uh, uh, medical department so is very curious to ans uh, ask questions so we are very lucky to have such a active participant here sir uh, uh, i'll i'll connect professor radhakrishnan to you sir straight away so that yes, he sir. can get his doubts clarified yes sir sir radha krishnan are you there sir yeah i am here uh, uh, sir good morning sir yeah thank good you morning, good morning sir good morning and rao sir i have read many of your papers in uh, uh, research gate and uh, most of them are wonderful let me congratulate you for uh, the extensive write ups and mathematical models also uh, i have one doubt that is you have worlds uh, coming in uh, journal bearing which is a disadvantage uh, vibrations which can be suppressed can be used with uh, piezo actuators uh, to move the bearing bushings in two directions to give good stability at higher rotational speed that is not answer yeah uh, sir rashika sir ha uh, yes, sir Just for repeating, uh, repeating the question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Radha, Radha Krishnan, sir. So, uh, add one more step to that. Can we use uh, this parametric uh, excitation concept uh, to reduce the vibrations? So these two things, whether we can use uh, piezoelectric actuators and parametric excitation to cut down the vibrations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good question. In fact, uh, yeah. So vibration reduction on uh, yes, sir. this is very much possible and uh, but here our focus is uh, as you, as i have uh, mentioned we are only looking into the uh, impact of the fluid film the kind of fluid film uh, in supporting the uh, rotors supported on the fluid film bearing sir but as you have rightly mentioned yes uh, that is a great area of work and uh, people are actually combining the fluid film bearings with the uh, active magnetic bearings to reduce uh, the vibrations So, yes, sir. Bring about periodic changes yes. in controller gain for this parametric excitation. Mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are actually the externally controlling the vibration is another uh, area of field altogether. There are number of uh, works in that area, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And second thing, I was uh, excited about your uh, mention of CNT also because we are using carboxylated uh, uh, CNT, that is single walled CNT, is actually for uh, scaffold for tissue regeneration. and lot of medical uses gene therapy implants and uh, so many areas it is coming up wonderful to have sure, sure. also yes sir yes sir please please we'll be glad to interact with you further yes. uh, and uh, yes sir yes sir share your we will be you know, looking forward to sharing your knowledge also and uh, in this area yeah yeah yes sir
thank you sir thank you so much yeah thank you thank you sir radha krishnan sir it's a very nice questions you have asked sir uh, rao sir uh, radha krishnan sir is basically from a medical background but he is very curious to participate in all our sessions so thank you sir thank you uh, uh, thanks for thanks to radha krishnan sir as well as to our rao sir sir we got one more question yeah. has been raised by uh, tch anil kumar so i will yes, allow him to talk to you straight away yes sir yes sir uh, professor anil kumar are you there sir Yes, sir. Is right, my one audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes. It's audible, sir. You can speak to sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. That's a very nice presentation of you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, I have one doubt uh, regarding that uh, your hypothesis that is uh, two film uh, lubrication and three film lubrication. Yes. Uh, suppose uh, if we have the other problems uh, which arise uh, while in uh, intact machine misalignment, especially angular misalignment. then uh, the required thickness of the film uh, is it possible to stabilize that type of uh, thickness when in operation yeah 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 that's a right right sir i think you have asked a very good question uh, yes usually yeah if uh, maybe the question you are asking is something like if the misalignment were yeah, to yeah. exist then uh, would these kind of uh, films will be yeah. sustained yeah yes. so this is still a challenge sir yes uh, because uh, even if we have yeah. unbalance uh, it will create a force in one direction and uh, making the lift of the uh, it will, we will generally have instability due to that uh, unbalance mm. or misalignment forces uh, that will affect the thickness mm. of the film or not that i want to know sir. uh here uh, we have done the modeling assuming a constant uh, film thickness sir okay so i think you asked a very interesting question in terms okay. of uh, taking the film thickness to be a kind of a variable yeah uh, maybe this is very interesting uh, sir, actually uh, my area is uh, condition monitoring sir because uh, during experiments uh, when i uh -huh. seen that when i am creating misalignment Uh, in the bearings okay. uh, generally what happened is uh, due to that uh, forces uh, the lubricant is being squeezed out from the even it is a sealed bearing that's the problem i have hmm. observed so that's what i am thinking because uh, this is the first time i have listened that your papers while you are giving the no. uh, yeah, lecture also i am uh, trolling you i am seeing your research publications also that's a very Sir, good uh, hypothesis uh, the point is we are actually having a variable of eccentricity ratio so okay. we are treating the ratio of the film to the film height uh, right ratio of the layer thickness to the film height to be constant so if uh, okay. the the proposed the hypothesis is such if it is on the if the if the spacing is more then the distribution of these layers would be more accordingly and okay. uh, if the film is less like for example okay. in the minimum film thickness the distribution okay. of the layer thickness would be accordingly okay and uh, this model is i mean this kind of assumption is still uh, fine sir you know it, it yeah. works very well and it gives uh, appropriate you know appropriately the same results uh, that were to be analyzed you know in the other way also even if you if we were to now you see the non dimensionalization we have done with respect to the variable film height See, this is okay. okay. You have asked a very valid uh, question. In fact, uh, that is what I was actually talking. We the the idea is actually floating for a long, long time. But what I mentioned is that when Professor Zeri has published it, we go, we got a great motivation to proceed further. The the point I wanted to say is that Professor Zeri has also taken the variable film thickness as a parameter for non-dimensionalization. See, the big challenge okay. is the reviewers are not convinced uh, earlier when we did that. Okay. they were questioning the uh, the criteria for non dimensionalization non dimensionalization saying that mm -hmm. the non dimensional parameter should be a constant but yeah. you know if we were to treat it to be a variable the mm. the performance uh, characteristic output should not be greatly different and that is exactly what uh, is professor zeri in order to provide a simplistic analysis he has taken the non dimensionalization with respect to the film thickness which itself yeah. is variable sir so okay. the questions that you are asking is uh, related to the misalignment or vibrations yeah. which actually provide some kind of a different uh, h film thickness yes. Yes. and obviously according to our analysis we are non dimensionalizing non dimensionalizing with h 
so our uh, ratios also will be accordingly adjusted sir okay sir. that is the point okay thank you thank you sir <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That was a nice elaborated explanation. So with the patience, you have given answers to all questions. Seems we don't have any more questions, sir. I request all participants, if you have any queries uh, still, you can just mail us. We will uh, send this forward, these uh, things to uh, Rao, sir, and we will get it clarified. Come back. We'll come back to you soon. Uh, so once again, thank Rao, you. sir, uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind presentation and sharing knowledge. So on behalf of Geetam University, and management and the department we once again uh, thank you and we convey our heartfelt gratitudes to you sir thank you very much sir ashok is here sir thank you sir thank you you <laughs> can speak sir thank you uh, very much sir it was very wonderful uh, uh, presentation thank and you. thank uh, you sir your valuable time you spent with us so thank you very much sir thank you thank you sir nice yeah. meeting you on the online platform thank you sir <laughs> Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, all participants. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I'll, I'll end up the meeting, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. all participants. Thank you very much for your uh, active participation. And I request all participants to just fill the feedback form that would be posted on our group. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Rao, sir, thank you very much. Bye-bye, sir. Thanks. Bye. I can leave, sir. I can leave. Ah, okay.